Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. This week we are on Imperium issue 13. Look at that. We got a beautiful Blood Angel on the cover. How cool does he look? And we get five miniatures. All assault intercessors. We get how to paint and we get a whole new fight phase rule set. Dun dun dun. So let's get into it. Let's have a look, we get the Assault in Assessor's Squad, In Search of Immortality, Necrons, The Tomb Awakens, Stories, A Thousand Chapters, The Assault in Assessor Squad, How to Build, uh, The Assault in Assessor Squad, How to Paint, and then Battle for the Orb. Assault Intercessors, Mobile Close Combat Specialist. So we saw these early on in the uh, magazine series. We got the free push fit that had the Pushfit Ultramarines. This one is completely unmarked. If you want to mark them, you have to use transfers, which is great. Talks about the fact that the Sergeant has a plasma pistol and a bionic arm, the heraldry, the fact that they all have, the squad sergeants have red helmets, especially if they're Ultramarine compliant, their close support units, then you get the classic battle record page, which we all know and love. Then, in search of immortality, the Necrons are feared across the Imperium and beyond as a race of immortal android warriors. If I can get my words out. Rumors persist of ancient Necron tombs rising from the beneath the surface of settled worlds and of relentless legions crushing all beneath their metallic tread. Yet, the Necrons were not always this way. Nice little background piece. Then we get the Catan which are basically the gods of the Necrons. But the Necrons basically then made them their servants, which is pretty cool. And then the old ones in the Eldari, who they have a long history with. We then get a little story, which I've not yet read. I'm going to... I want to wait until I have a lot more of the pieces together. Because I feel like they should be red in order. But beautiful artwork. I can't wait until we get one of these in the kit. Then, whoop, how to build. As you can see, this page was already out. Because I've built them. It's pretty easy. It's a two-page piece. How to paint. Nothing exciting. Ultimately, if you're going for the ultramarine scheme, they're going to look like that by the end. Oh, and we also got the fluff piece, a thousand chapters. There may be as many as a thousand space marine chapters in the known galaxy. Some were born of first founding, and they have a history that goes back 10,000 years. Others are newly founded, all serve the Emperor and fight his wars with unquestioning loyalty. Get a little photo of the uh, Black Templars versus some Orcs. Get a little bit about the Imperial Fists and the Black Templars. So the Imperial Fists was a founding legion, as they're known. And then the Black Templars were a second founding chapter. But basically are uh, Imperial Fists. And we see the uh, Space Wolves. And the Dark Angels, pretty cool. Then they talk a little bit about being at war. We obviously learn again about fleet-based chapters, chapter planets. Then we got White Scars and Blood Angels. And then we got the map. This is not a new map in any way, shape or form. This is actually inside the binder that you put all the pages in. But it's pretty nice to see. I'm not entirely sure if the executioners are on here. Might just have a quick look. Nope, they are not on there. I think it's because they're a fleet-based chapter. And then we get a battle report, which we'll obviously be jumping into, but we might as well talk about it now. Battle for the Orb. 
Space Marines have located a valuable piece of Necron technology, the Overlord's Resurrection Orb. Destroying this item may help secure an Imperial victory. Mission Brief and the Necrons must secure their Master's Resurrection Orb and slaughter the impotent space impertinent Space Marine invaders. The Space Marines must hold back the Necrons long enough for their allies to destroy the Resurrection Orb. Look at this. We got full stats, everyone. So, we got... Initially, it's going to be a Primaris Captain. He's got two versions of Plasma Pistol Shot for this game. Then we have the Assault Intercessor Squad, which is great to see. Then if you do the rematch, you use the free aggressors from an earlier magazine. And on the Necron side, you have the Scorp Tech Destroyers with multiple weapons. I don't know if you can see that. The Hyperphase Reap Blade and the Hyperphase Freshers. So the Reap Blade is a plus two strength, AP minus four, damage free. Whereas the other ones, strength is user. So the Reap Blade makes him strength seven. Otherwise, they're strength 5, minus 3 AP, 2 damage, but they make additional attacks. So two of them are armed this way, and the two that are armed that way each get to make 4 attacks. At strength 5, minus 3 armor, 2 damage apiece. Whereas this one, he only makes 3 attacks, but at strength 7, minus 4 AP, damage free. Then there's the Scarab Swarms, and if you... Do the rematch, you swap out the Scarab Swarm for the Overlord. Gonna be using the big map. Woo! And the Necrons start here and have to get across the board. Oh, don't see me on my hand. Have to get across the board to here. That is basically it, so we'll be into that in a second. Right, we are back. So, battle for the orb. For this game, we are going to use... Let's put the sheets down. Ow. Right, we got three scarab swarms that are going to set up around A, which is up here. I'm going to pretty much copy their example. So that one is in the back. This one more towards the front. And this one beside. Then in the opposite corner, we have the Scorp Tech Destroyers, which are amazing models. I'm excited to use this guy now that he has proper rules. So he can be Mr. B. They also set up in a similar pattern. Whoop! Their objective of this game is to get down to here, just off camera, you can't see it. And they have to be there for an entire turn. Facing off against them, if I move this rules out of the way, Primaris Captain. We all know and love him. Then we have the Primaris Intercessors, who have a 4 inch bubble deployment zone, but in the example, which we're going to follow, they are kind of set up something like this. So that's what we're going to go with. Make sure he is within four inches. He is. Right. I got my Necron sheets. Let's get going. So turn one, Space Marines. Ultimately, they got to move forward, shoot, and charge this turn. So, the captain, he has a move of six. We are not going to be doing any runs. So he gets up to hit. And the assault intercessors also have a move of six. Then at this point, we get the shooting phase. So, we're going to start with the captain. 
So scarabs have a base wound of four and they have living metal so you have to kill the base or it's going to regain some hit wounds every turn. So we're going to supercharge the pistol. As long as I don't roll a one, we're fine. Nearly jinxed myself there. So four, he hit. Supercharged makes it strength eight versus the versus the toughness of three. So not only is it greater, it is over double, which means it needs a two to wound. So twos to wound, it wounds. Sorry, I just banged the microphone there. With a five, it wounds. So damage is two, it is AP minus three. Scarabs only have a six plus save, so it's automatically just took half of the wounds. And we'll do it to the closest base first. For ease. That's now took two wounds. Now we move over to the Assault Intercessors, who are gonna fire everything into the destroyers. So we'll start with Let's start with the sergeant. He's gonna supercharge his plasma pistol. He needs a free to hit. And I rolled that off the screen. He got the free. It is strength eight versus toughness five. So it's not double, but it is greater. So freeze to wound. Fails to wound. Now the other guys all have heavy bolt pistols and it's one shot a piece so there's four heavy bolt pistols freeze to hit and they all hit we then need strength four versus toughness five fives to wound one wound it's a minus minus one so four up to save they save right we're going to move on to the assault phase as we're already over here these guys are gonna go into the score packs with a 10 inch charge they're comfortably in. So closest to closest. And then they start wrapping around. Something like that. Then we'll do the captain. He gets a seven, which should put him comfortably in here. And we might as well start with the captain first. So on the charge, he has five attacks, which is ridiculous. He's using his power sword, which gives him plus one strength. Doesn't affect how he hits. So hitting on twos, one miss. So four hits, he gets plus one strength. So he is now strength five versus their toughness of three. So he is greater, but not twice as good. So we need freeze to wound. Wow, four wounds, each at two damage and minus three. So we know the Scarabs have a six up save, so they have no save. So at two wounds apiece, two, that's enough to take out this base. And then the Scarabs have four wounds in total. So two that, two that, and then two that. He nearly wiped the squad on his own. He got very close to doing it, but not quite. That was a tasty round of fighting. So the intercessors have charged the Scorp Tex destroyers. Dun dun dun. Right, everyone on the Space Marine side is weapon skill plus three. So they're all gonna hit the same. They all have chainswords, so I don't need to separate any attacks out. But each time Space Marine with the chainsword fights, they get an additional attack. So the sergeant is base three, with the chainsword it's four. Then there's Four more guys, each attack two, which becomes three. It is in total three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen dice. And they are hitting on threes. Let's zoom out a little. You can see my bookshelves now. So anything less than three. That's not bad. So Space Marines are Strength 4 versus Toughness 5, meaning 5s are needed to wound. So they've done 6 wounds in total. The Chainsaw is a minus 1 damage, but only does 1 damage in total. So minus 1 armor means I need 4s or more to save. Saved 4 but failed two. It's 
Gulptex have three wounds. So the guy at the front there has survived. He is on two wounds, but we'll mark that. But now the Necrons get to fight back. So the Scarab base, Necrons attacking back now. He gets to move in. They have four attacks base. Wow, they're only hitting on fours, but any sixes I roll, auto wound. So it didn't auto wound, but did hit three times, which is nice. Strength three versus toughness four. So I need fives to wound. Ooh, two wounds. Look at that. There's no minus AP. They're just damage one. And the Space Marine has a free up save. And saves both. So let's see what we got. Uh, let's do the Reaper Blade. So the guy in the back corner here. He has three attacks. And that's it. So he is hitting on freeze. All three hit. Oof, that's deadly. He is now strength seven versus toughness four. So he's any greater. So freeze up to wound. Two wounds. It is minus four AP, which means the Space Marines have no saves against it. And it is damage free. So each one of these dice just kills a Space Marine. So one, two. He has just minced some space marines. Then we get the other two with their freshers. They are base attack free. And then each time the bearer fights, they get plus one attack. So they get eight attacks back. Hidden on freeze. Ooh, that is a terrible dice roll. Well, I guess half hit. It's probably show you average and then they are strength five so they need fours to wound no freeze to wound Do so yeah freeze to wound all four wound they are damage to a piece minus three so they get space marines get saved they need sixes there's no sixes damage two there's not enough the scorp techs have wiped the unit oh this is not good for the space so we now have the necrons turn so we're going to start with the swarm he is going to go straight for the objective using fly to get out of combat he can move 10 inches so he's going to be up here he has left the space marine captain on his own which then makes it quite nice because the destroyers are going to come scuttling over they can go eight. So this front one can get to there. The Necrons have zero shooting, which means they're gonna charge into the captain. Seven should comfortably do it. Yeah, so he's in combat. The rest follow up. Now on to the assault phase. I think the captain is in trouble. So they can move two inches to get closer. Let's start with the big, big weapon. So hidden on freeze. Oh, hit. Strength seven versus toughness of four. Freeze the wound. I need the one wound. The captain technically would not get an armor save, but he gets a four plus invulnerable and fails. Ooh, that's free damage. It's half his wounds gone. This is not looking good for the space marines. Now the others attack. They get four attacks each. This unit is deadly. So freeze to hit. Couple of misses. They are strength five versus toughness four. So they're greater still. Freeze the wound. Three more wounds. These three miss. They are. He needs fours to save. Ah, <gasps> and he saves all three of them. A six, a six, and a four. The captain is still in it. Captain turns around. Armed with his power sword, he 
takes a swing. He's got five attacks. Hitting on twos. Ooh, one misses. He is strength four versus their toughness five. So, oh, the sword gives him plus one. So he's five versus five, meaning fours to wound. Two don't wound. It's minus three, so these guys have sixes to save. And I just remembered something. Living Metal, he would have regained a wound. And so with the scarabs who are off screen. So sixes to save. Saves neither. Oof, and a damage two. So he's got one point of damage. Two more damage puts him on three. So he is dead. And the other one sneaks over onto him. And that is the end of the Necron phase. The captain has a lot of work to do. He's going to struggle to catch that Scarab Swarm. So the objective of the game is the Necron units touching the objective by the end of turn three. The yeah, Necrons win. So we are on turn two. We're now starting turn two. That was a gory first turn. So the Space Marine, he would have consolidated in. It's the Assault phase. No, Shoot phase, because he's got Plasma Pistol. I'm forgetting the rules already. Pistol can be shot even when in close combat. So he needs a two to hit. Hits, he did supercharge. I'm just gonna say that, because that, why would he do anything else? Strength eight versus toughness five. It's not double. So freeze to wound, doesn't wound. Close combat, five attacks. Hidden on twos. Misses again with one. He really needs to hit all of them. He is wounding on fours. Gets three wounds through. We need sixes. Saved one. But the first one does two damage, which kills him off. And the second one does two damage, which puts this guy on one. And he now gets to fight back. This is not what the marine captain needed. He has three attacks, hidden on freeze. I've got to stop hitting that microphone. Three attacks, hidden on freeze. He only hit once. Strength seven. So wounding on freeze, he wounded. Space Marine Captain, he needs a four or more to stay in the game. He stayed. <gasps> Oof. Right, it's the Necron's turn. Living Metal. Necron regains a wound, he's fully recovered, the Scarabs have fully recovered, and the Scarabs are not quite on the objective yet. Turn 3, the Scarabs will make it to the objective. Attack 3, hitting on freeze. He whiffed, he only hit once, wounding on freeze. He did wound. The Space Marine Captain needing a 4 to stay in the game. Rolls a 1, the Captain has fallen. Damage free, he can't save it. Game over. Necrons win, and it's all thanks to this beastie boy. Rawr. That's a hard battle. Let's see how the rematch goes. So, time for the rematch. The only difference is the Necrons swap out the Scarab Swarm for the Overlord, and the Assault in Assessors get swapped out for the Aggressors. So, turn one Space Marines got to be a very similar tactic to the first turn so move him up salt in assessors are in five inch move but still move up i feel like the last game was hard because the scarabs with five just do that full back uh scarabs with fly can just do a full back move and jump 10 inches and they're like halfway down the board and then next turn they're gone and the assault in assessors sucked at killing these guys. Hopefully this time that doesn't happen. So we'll start over here. The aggressors have assault d6 weapon. And each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits d6 times 3. That's a low roll. 6. But they all auto hit. Strength 5 versus toughness 5. 5's to wound. 
only one wound that is not great and it's only damage one no minus ap so saving on a freight well shows you what i know did a wound captain's gonna overcharge his pistol into the overlord he hits just Oof. strength eight versus toughness five he needs freeze to wound he wounds necron overlord only has a free up save so with the overcharge gets a six to save and fails miserably so that's a better start the overlord has just took two wounds now for the charge phase captain into the overlord seven inches that should be more than enough and then the assault in assessors get an eight that should also be more than enough yeah i'm not going to worry about zooming in this time this is going to be a quicker one so each assault intercessor gets three attacks the sergeant gets four so four for the sergeant three and three minus one to hit because of the fist so they need fours to hit it's not bad six hits strength times two so they're strength eight versus toughness five they're not double so five's the wound no three's the wound oof four wounds each wound is minus three AP, two damage. So any sixes save it. But they have done six damage in total. So the way this works is two wounds on that first guy, then another two wounds to kill him. Blink. And then two wounds on the next one. So they nearly killed him. It's not a bad first turn. They then get to consolidate. So move in like that. Then we hop over to the captain. Captain has five attacks, hidden on twos. Everything hits. He is strength five versus toughness five. So fours. Just the one. Then it's minus three, two damage. So six to save, gets a four, he's took another two damage. The Necron, is Overlord, is just hanging on, he's got one wound left. Brutal first turn. Right, let's do the Overlord back. The Overlord only has four attacks, his Void Scythe means he's minus one to hit, so he's only hitting on freeze. But he hits with everything. He's strength times two, so he's now strength 10 versus toughness four. Wounded on twos. He should easily wound here. Yep, everything wounds. Now it's damage free. It's minus four AP. So the Space Green Captain has no armor save, so he's just got four ups to save. And fails two, succeeds at two. So it's damage free. He's just done six wounds on the captain. The captain is gone. Oh my deck is not going good again. So, <laughs> right, close combat over here. We'll start with, so after that brutal combat, we are on to this one. So we'll start with the hyper phase replayed. Three attacks, hidden on freeze, two hits. Strength 7 versus Toughness 5, so it's greater, so freeze the wound. Minus 4 AP, Space Marine's not getting a save, it's damage free. He has just killed one. Necrons are vicious. And then the Thresher. 
four attacks, hitting them freeze, misses twice, strength five, toughness five, wounding on fours, one wound, it's minus three so we need a six to save, does not save, two down, two wounds, that leaves this space marine on one, and we go into the necron phase, so start the phase, living metal, Drops this guy down to one wound. He's on two. Necron's on three. Right, we are going to run with the Overlord. He's got to get up the table ten inches. It's up to here. Basically, if he can't be stopped, he's won. And we go straight into the assault phase. So the big blade, hit on freeze, two misses. Wounding on freeze, does wound. Space Marine has no saves, damage free. Popping them off. Don't know, can't remember where that one came from. He'll consolidate. No, he won't. Thrasher is now going to hit, hitting on freeze, wounding on fours, no wounds, uh oh, now he'll consolidate, the aggressive fights back, only three attacks, hitting on fours, two hits, strength eight, so he's wounded on threes. Three knees need sixes to save. None save, so he's killed this guy. They're two damage apiece, and then the other one is on one wound. And they are locked in combat. Right. Turn two. We got further than the last time, pretty much. Space Marine, he can't do much. He doesn't have anything he can shoot in the shooting phase, so it's close combat. Three attacks hitting on fours. Only the one hit. That's all he needed though. Wounding on freeze. He's wounded. And six to save, or the Necron's dead. Necron is dead. That is it. Right. Necron turn two. Living metal rule. Now two wounds, he's going to run again. He is what, six? Lost his move. Six plus two, he can go eight. He's off the camera for a minute. That is the end of Necron turn two. Okay, before we start Space Marine turn three, which is the final turn of the game, just had to rearrange the camera so you could kind of see both guys. Be honest, this is looking like a Necron win. It's, as you can probably see in my picture, <laughs> the aggressor is way, way, way in the backfield compared to the Necron Lord. Uh, all the Necrons have to do is to be touching E by the end of turn three. So by the end of their next turn. So the Necron needs get to objective E needs a 9 so he is gonna have to advance I feel like Hashiki has to be touching E let me just check that okay so the rules clearly state that by the end of Necron turn 3 the Necron has to be touching the objective so for him to touch it he'll need an advance roll of a 3 or more to make it I know the aggressor is not going to be able to get into combat the overlord because the aggressor got a 5 inch move does not get him very far at all. Get him to the other side of the barrel. Even if he'd have to roll double sixes to reach the Overlord in close combat. But that is not going to happen. Could advance still though. Get closer and be able to shoot. So that is going to be the play. The aggressor has a five inch move. And rolls a 
five on his advance, so that's pretty good. Actually, that's really good because that's got him so much closer than he was earlier. So we now know the aggressor is within 12 inch shooting, but because he advanced, he is minus one to hit, but his weapon auto hits, so it doesn't affect him. So he gets 2d6 shot, no he doesn't, he gets a d6 shot, <laughs> 2d6, that would have been powerful. And he rolls a 4, so 4 auto hits, it is strength 4 versus toughness 5, so he does need 5s to wound. And he gets 1, that will not be enough to kill the Necron Overlord. See if the Necron Overlord can save on a free boss. Doesn't, but it really doesn't matter because it's now the Necron's turn. So it is now Necron turn three. Let's just double check this measurement. That out the way. So to be comfortable, he he's got to get a free or more on his advance roll. So let's see. It's a six. Okay. Do, 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 do. Necrons win. Two nil. This issue has not been very good for the Space Marines. They lost not one, but two battle reports. Second round was a bit closer. But yeah, Scarab Swarms is a crazy objective for Travers. With the 10 inch flea being able to get them into scoring and then the overlord got lucky he was able to finish the space marine and get through that's hard i'm not sure how he's best to win does the captain retreat towards the objective that the necron's trying to get to and just keep putting some uh, plasma shots in in the hopes that he can then kill the necron lord but then that would free up the Necron Lord to come over and kill the aggressors with the Scorp Tech. The Scorp Tech moves faster than the Lord, and then you suddenly got a captain facing down the whole Necron Horde. So I am not sure how the Space Marines were meant to win. If you got any suggestions, drop me a comment, drop me a like, drop me a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next issue. Bye!